Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me. If this is your first time here, please subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos. And if you're here for a second, third, or fourth time, thank you so much for coming back and getting creative. All right, guys, this is another great painting for my first time painter. So you're going to get really comfortable with your tools, your brush pressure, and mixing your paint and blending. So grab your supplies. Remember to take your progress photos. And we're going to jump right into uh, light blue for our background. And light blue, I'm using the large flat brush. We're going to pull some white aside. A tiny amount of blue goes a long way to make your light blue. Now, if yours is a little lighter or darker than mine, totally okay. And I want you to start at the bottom and go about four or five inches from the bottom, and you're going to create this horizon line across your canvas. And then we're going to start filling from this line towards the top of the canvas. And you can see here that I'm using the full width of the brush. And if you have to mix your color two or three times, don't stress. A uh, little variety will be of your benefit. And here you can see where I made my second uh, mixture and it's a little bit darker than the first one. Just kind of play with that. Um, pull it into the paint that's already on your canvas. This is kind of a quick little intro to wet on wet blending and you're just kind of creating this nice light blue space with some variations um, on the uh, main portion of your canvas. If you happen to be on a stretched canvas I do recommend carrying this color around the sides and the tops of your canvas. So that way it looks nice when you hang it on the wall, having that color wrap around the edge. Now, once you have this done, I do recommend pausing the video and taking your progress photo. You're going to clean your brush really good, and we're going to make a light raw sienna, and that's white with a little raw sienna, and then we're going to add a touch of yellow to it to warm it up. And when you're adding your pigment, it is best to kind of add a small amount because you can always add more compared to trying to add too much um, and then backtracking. So here we kind of have the indication of some sand dunes, and I am going to go right over that background sky color. But I'm also, as you can see, leaving a little bit of space, a little kind of an odd triangle. That's where our ocean is going to go. So kind of just mimic what you saw in there um, on the screen on your canvas. And then we're taking that white and raw sienna with a touch of yellow mixture, and we're going to fill in the rest of these sand dunes. And same thing with the sky. If you have to make your color two or three times, don't stress about getting the exact same shade every time. With this painting, um, it is geared towards first time painters, so I just want you getting comfortable with your tools, the pressure of your brush, and mixing your paint. So now we're going down to the medium flat brush, and we're grabbing that direct raw sienna, and we're going to place it in a few areas, and then we'll go back and blend it into that base. This is called that wet on wet blending. This does not have to be perfect. And again, this is just getting you comfortable with blending your paint. Now, if you are holding your breath right now, take a big inhale for me. Um, you're going to do better than you think you're capable of. And this is a skill that gets better with more and more practice. So just start where you're at right now. Um, I tell my students the only way to fail at painting is to not paint at all. So again, just kind of look and see where I placed each of those raw sienna areas and blended it in. Now we're going to do the same thing with white and kind of place that in the center. Again, just getting you comfortable with your tools today. You're doing great. And if you did wrap the color around the edges on the top of your canvas, make sure that you've wrapped the color around the edges on the bottom here. Now we're still using that middle flat brush and we're going to go for a medium blue and that's about a one to one ratio of blue and white. And we're going to fill in that remaining kind of weird triangle shape. Um, for this is the indication that we have a little bit of an ocean back there over these sand dunes. It's not the main focus of our painting. And just kind of be cautious, be a little more controlled with your brush strokes. If you happen to overlap your sand dunes, you can wipe it off with a paper towel and then reapply the appropriate color. So another place to pause the video and take a progress photo, you can let this fully dry at this point if you want. Or if you're excited, just jump right into the next step. Now we're going to be using that raw sienna and I want you to try a few different brush strokes as we do this. I am using that middle flat brush and I'm holding it kind of sideways. I want you to just start to get comfortable with this. 
Um, you may have some lines that are longer, some that are skinnier, some that are wider. Light pressure will keep a skinnier line. A little more pressure will make a wider line. Try it a few times with that middle brush, and then I want you to jump down to that pointy brush and give it a try as well. Again, you're just getting your muscles comfortable with holding the brush, the pressure of the brush, and here with the pointy brush, it is a little bit easier to make some skinnier lines or even some longer lines. And do notice that I go back and I grab more paint every couple of brush strokes. If your paint is a bit on the thick side, you can add a touch of water to it and that will thin it down and make some of these lines a little bit easier. But be kind to yourself right now, especially if this is your first time painting. You're probably going to have some varying widths of lines. You're going to have some you like, some you don't like, some you really that you find irritating. Just embrace it because the next time that you go to paint, these skills will show up and make more sense. So right now, this is just your starting point and the sky is the limit from here. So hopefully you're not underneath a glass ceiling, but just know that with practice, you get better and you're, you can hone in your skills like anything in life. More practice just gets you more comfortable. So as you're doing this, if you need to, you can rest your forearm against the edge of the table. You can turn the canvas sideways if you need to, um, but just start understanding what you like in the creative process. So here you can see I added a little bit of black to that burnt, uh, to that raw sienna, just going for a little bit of a darker shade. And if yours is lighter or darker than mine, totally okay. And we're going with those same brush strokes. Again, just kind of building the density of these little um, uh, grassy foliage areas on the sand dunes. And again, if you need to jump back up to that larger brush, that medium flat brush, because you liked that a little bit more, go ahead and do that. Right now, you're just getting comfortable with the process of painting. Hopefully, you're so focused on your painting that you kind of forget about, you know, the rest of your life for um, an hour, 45 minutes to an hour or so. And that's one of the biggest benefits of the painting process. All right, and whatever you do today, just kind of embrace it. You can paint this painting again, and you may have better control. You may understand the process a little bit more, but it's a nice way to kind of see your visual um, learning curve if you paint this again. And especially if you paint this again in a year from now, after you've been painting on a regular basis, you will see a vast improvement in your skills. And that's kind of the fun part about the painting process. You get to see where you're growing and have a visual documentation of that. All right, so just, Again, just kind of observe what I'm doing, where I'm placing this color. If you're inclined to put it somewhere, I do not. Trust your instincts. If you end up not liking it later, you just let it dry and you can paint on top of it again with acrylic paint. So now I'm grabbing that direct raw sienna and the, um, the little grassy foliage area on this dunes. Um, they've got a little extra, uh, looks almost kind of like wheat to me. I forgot what they are called over on the East Coast. Um, but just adding that extra little foliage, if you've got something specific you want to add, a seashell or um, grass, you can do whatever you want. Just use this as a base guideline and take it your own direction. As you get into the groove of painting, I do recommend, along with the progress photos, but to prop your painting up and look at it from a distance of 5 to 10 feet away. This is more of the normal viewing distance for artwork. All right, so now we're making our own green. So we're starting with the yellow, adding a tiny amount of blue, tiny, tiny amount of blue to make your green. And if you wanna go a little bit darker or a little bit brighter green than I used here, you could add a little more blue, or if you actually have green paint, you can use that. And just kind of giving a little bit extra kind of green foliage out here um, with the other brownish foliage. And you can do those same little lines or, um, just kind of little specks or dots in there. I do recommend pausing the video, taking your progress photo, and you should fully have your background dry before you do this part, and at this point it should be dry. We're gonna put little palm fronds that are kind of hanging into the scene. So we put the center of the palm frond in there, and then we're gonna do the leaves, and the leaves are little dash marks. Again, getting you good control and good practice with your brush. So again, play with that pressure. And you want a healthy palm tree, so you want an abundance of these dash marks, an abundance of these leaves. And I want you overlapping the leaves, 
um, making them go in different directions because you are imagining that this is outside and the wind is blowing. And as soon as my hand moves, you'll be able to see a little bit more. And even just take note of what it looks like right now and then what it looks like as I add more dash marks. Again, rotate the canvas sideways if you're finding a groove that makes it a little bit easier to go in a certain direction. I keep my painting in the same orientation just because um, I'm filming the video for you guys, but I fully encourage to adjust anything about my videos to what you need to do and what you want to accomplish with your painting. If you only want to add one palm frond, you, you can do that. If you want to add four or five, feel free to add as many as you want. Now, sometimes you may notice that I'll put my pinky out and study that on the canvas and use that as my pivot point. Um, when you're first starting out, sometimes resting your forearm against the edge of your table is to your benefit. Um, sometimes you might need to put the painting on your lap. And, you know, just again, adjust for what you need. But every couple of brush strokes, go back and grab more paint. You can add a touch of water to your black paint, especially if it's on the thicker uh, side. That will help thin it out. If you already kind of have runny paint to begin with, don't add water to it. You want to be able to just kind of get your comfort level with the control of your brush. And that gets better with each painting. If you would like birds in the sky, go ahead and add those. They're little V's or little M shapes. And then I am going to take this color and go back to the little foliage on the ground and just add one more color in there, another little level of depth. You can add this if you want. You can add other colors if you want to put seashells in here, footprints in the sand, um, a little crab, or anything that you want to do to your painting. Go ahead and do it. I'm really proud of you guys for stepping out of your comfort zone and giving painting a try. Um, please don't wait too long to do your next painting because you will see what you're learning in today's painting show up in your next painting. And then same with that process. When you go to paint something again, what you learned from that painting will show up in the next one. So that is why I encourage all my students to find creative outlets on a monthly, if not weekly basis. It will only add to your benefits and um, enjoyment of life. So I did decide that I wanted a third um, uh, palm frond in there. So again, if you even put this on the wall and look at it for a week and you realize you want to add something, take it off the wall and add what you want. That is the beauty of acrylic paint. You can layer over and over and over again. So I'm really proud of you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for getting creative. Don't wait too long for your next painting. And until then, cheers. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the process of painting and I hope how you liked how your paintings turned out. I'm really proud of you for painting at home. As you're uploading your pictures to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email me your pictures paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. I really enjoy seeing those. I try to post them on social media um, and encourage other beginners and first time painters to try painting. So please share this with your community and keep getting creative. If you have any comments, feedback, suggestions, things you want me to paint in the future, go ahead and leave a comment and I will um, answer them as quickly as I can and try to get those new paintings um, in my production list and on the rotation. So thanks again for taking time out of your day to get creative with me. Don't wait too long to do your next one. And until then, cheers. Thank you.